first. Uh, if we want to go ahead and assign equipment, we just, uh, if you'll notice what I did here, click in the asset form, there's a little lookup, and we can just say, let's put, uh, let's put 70 on there, and then let's put uh, 72, and we're going to go ahead and mark all of these as being reserved so that nobody else can rent those two pieces of equipment. We want to make sure that they're held for this date range. So we update our contract. You'll notice that the status of each row moved to uh, reserved, and now the assets are both uh, listed on the contract. Okay? <clears throat> so we have effectively made a quote or a uh, reservation. We can come over here and we can look and say, all right, for the 12 months, you're, uh, we have a, a monthly rate of $250, so the contract amount for each row is going to be $3,000, uh, each one plus uh, you know, taxes and that sort of thing. That'll, that'll come through on the, on the invoice. So, but this gets you your, your, your base amount. Okay, so we can say on this quote, it'd be $6,000 plus tax. Okay, so let's uh, flip back over here. So what you'll notice is that we have, uh, we're, we're able to get all the information that we want. We're able to provide them with what they want, and everything is being kept along the way, especially as we move to this next phase, next, uh, phase that we're, we're staying in the same place. We're not moving from quote screen to reservation screen to uh, whatever screen, it's just, uh, it's all staying uh, in the same place, okay? <clears throat> now, how do we con converting a uh, quote to an order? The problem here, again, is misinformation. Like I said, if you're going from spot to spot to spot to spot, how do you ensure that everything gets uh, moved accurately and completely from one spot to another? We have to ensure that the next person in the process is fully informed and can deliver on what you have already promised the customer, right? So, uh, <clears throat> don't blink because it's going to happen really fast, okay? So all we're going to do here now, we have our uh, reservation, and let's say now we're, we're uh, it's September the 1st, and we need to deliver this out to the customer. All we're going to do here is mark it as active. I'm going to update that, okay? That's part one. Part two is we just have to uh, do a quick delivery, so we're going to select all. That's just going to select both of these rows. It keeps you from having to scroll over. You can see we're going to say that we want to deliver these as of 9-1. It's going to do a little thinking, and we're done. So we have taken everything from quote to uh, to active contract. We uh, this little delivery right here. You'll notice it's a zero dollar delivery, but that's just a, really just a placeholder to make sure that uh, SAP knows that uh, that this has been shipped out. Uh, something you'll notice. I'll just show you this real quick. Um, if I click through to the uh, asset master, this is the central location for all of the uh, asset information. You'll notice that it now says that it is on contract 62. So when we perform that delivery, it, it updated this. It says uh, this record now shows us, it tells us where our equipment is. We can see that it's rented to a customer on contract 62, um, the physical location at customer location. Okay, And over here, we can even see the, uh, the customer information. We have the, the SAP record. Again, you can see this is the hyper integration piece. This, is going, this takes us right to the business partner information so we can have full look there. Um, if we were to click on this, it would take us back to the uh, to the to the rental contract. So, um, so everything is just pulled together nice and neat. We'll get into more of this screen in a few weeks when we do the uh, uh, the more asset intensive the accounting side of it. So, all right. So, <clears throat> so now at this point we have an active contract. Okay, everything is up. It's running, and we're exactly where we need to be. And it hasn't required that much work so far. Um, so that problem, that problem is solved. All right, hang on a second. We got a little bit of noise here. Let's see. All right. Apologies. Um, all right, so the uh, delivery, and actually I've already uh, gone through this part as well, but we want to make sure that all the equipment is delivered on time as promised. There's uh, queries that we can put that says, uh, you know, what, what equipment do I have? What, what reservations do I have that need to go out either today or this week? Something like that. And so we can um, look at that, look forward, and say, you know, this is uh, this is what we need to make sure that we're we're paying attention to. Obviously, we want to make sure that uh, revenues are maximized and that the uh, billing is accurate. So, let's look back here real quick, and you'll notice again going into our hyper integration mentality here. If I click through to this item code. <coughs> 
it's going to pull up the item master and you'll notice that we have the daily rental uh, rate actually I need the monthly rental which is $250 so that that price is actually set at the item master so when I added this contract or I'm sorry when I added this asset to the contract it automatically pulled in the correct price I didn't have to count on my employees to to say oh well I guess it's maybe it's 200 maybe it's 300 I don't know I'll just go with 250 it's automatically set that said if they did want to come in here and and make some sort of adjustment for any reason they can do that as well there's a there's a they can just adjust it manually, or um, there's a uh, discount mechanism over here on the very far right that we can use as well. So again, we're making sure that we have things set up, and that price actually, just to back up another step, that price can be set by the item master, it can be set by the customer, if they have their own pricing schedule. This is all driven by uh, intelligence that's built into this particular cell, so that it knows exactly what to charge and when. So it takes a lot of the thinking out of it for for your employees. All right, so we're removing mistakes here. All right, so we talked again about um, uh, disjointed systems and making sure that we uh, uh, are able to bill the way we need to bill and without any problems. So again, because uh, all of this is just working nice and neatly together, uh, there's two ways that we can bill this uh, this contract. Uh, the first way is uh, let's and we'll just do it both ways we can select both of these rows all right and we can say we're going to just bill one more month okay and so if we uh, just come down here delivery generate date not valid all right I've got something messed up here um, Oh, it's, I'm trying to bill outside of a date. So, um, anyways, so I can bill. Um, I can pick up the. Uh, th what I'm saying is using this, uh, selecting this row. We would bill one uh, period, and, which would be one month, and it would push it to the um, uh, to the following month. Okay, and so we would see that show up in the related docs. Okay, and it would show up as being a delivery. If it gets pushed to an invoice, we'll have full record of that. Everything in the delivery is an invoice. In fact, let me show you here in the delivery. It will give you the fixed assets information. You can see on the delivery it came from a rental contract 62, uh, row one, row two, how much it was. Obviously, this one's just a zero dollar amount. Okay. Um, all right, so that's one way that we can do this. The other way that we can bill is using this billing screen. Okay, so if I'm doing my bills for uh, the end of oops, September, and let's make sure we're refreshed, come down here, and I can see uh, contract 62, row one, contract 62, row two. Uh, those obviously this says last bill date is 831 that it just sets it to the day before it was delivered and so this is saying it needs to be billed out and the next bill date is 930 okay and so if we select these rows again I'm outside of my uh, my accounting range here unfortunately but um, if we were to select those rows we could just uh, select and select and generate the document and it would create the uh, delivery for that row if I wanted to select all of these generate the documents I've just done all of my billing for the month in less than about 10 seconds so it's very very simple you can use this as just a hey I'm just gonna get it all done or you can work it as a bit of a clearing screen to say you know just to be able to look through click through to the contract because if I if I click any of these golden arrows it's gonna get, take me to anywhere in SAP that uh, that I might be interested in so I can look through on this other contract up here and say you know make sure that everything looks okay before I actually bill it out so uh, again, either just do it one one big uh, billing or do it uh, one by one, just kind of using it as a clearing screen. So at the end of the month, what you end up with is just uh, it ideally is going to be a a blank screen here, so that you know everything for September has been billed out. Okay, and once I do that, again, my as I showed you in the uh, in the delivery document. My delivery documents show me they, they're pointing back to the rental contract, and this rental contract, as you can see, is pointing to the deliveries, the related deliveries and, and invoices that would come. Okay, So there's this full audit trail to know exactly where everything is coming from and going to. Okay. 
Um, so again, disjointed systems, we, we want to make sure that everybody's talking, you know, that, that all the parts are talking to each other. We want to make sure that the rental piece is talking to the ERP piece and vice versa. And so hopefully you guys uh, saw how that works, okay? All right, so change management. So now what do we do if, uh, if a customer comes and they say, uh, you know what, this, this uh, piece of equipment actually uh, broke down it was, or it didn't work, something like that. Uh, I broke it, well, any number of different things. Uh, we need the ability to just t to receive the one that's not working and then add a new one uh, back to this contract. So um, without getting too far ahead of ourselves, I'll just uh, give you a quick overview that all we're going to do is just select a row. We come in here to the uh, return, and let's say that we were going to return the second line. All right. And let's actually do this on uh, 930. Okay, so we could return this one as of the end of the month. We add that. Okay, and we can see that this is now returned. Over here, you'll notice that the first one is still active, but the second one is returned, and the end date is no longer 831.16, it's 930.15. And so now all we gotta do is come in here just like we were at the beginning, and add another piece of equipment, okay? And it may be, there's a faster way that we can do this. In fact, I'll show you here in a second. Let's just do it this way. Let me, let's say I wanted to pull in uh, R75. Let's cancel this. I'm gonna delete the row, okay? And I can just come in here and type in R75 and tab off of this. And rather than having to do the lookup and the lookup, it automatically just pulls everything in for me, okay? Everything over here still pulls in the unit price as it normally would. The only thing is it's going to pull up the, the date as it's supposed to be. So since this one ended on 930, we're going to want this one to start on 101. And so once I change that, it's going to refresh the, the screen. And so you can see that now we, the first, first month was on the second row, but the remaining 11 months are going to be tagged to the second asset. Okay? So it's a very easy process. Return one, add another. Uh, very, very simple to do. And so we would just update this. We're going to do another, uh, in order for this to actually be able to bill, we got to uh, make sure that we deliver it. And generate that. Takes two seconds, three seconds. And now we're back to active. So we have one, two, two now that are active. The first one came back, and it's going to, if we go back, if we were to go back to that asset ID, it would show that it's available, um, or at least not on rent. And we can see that now 70 and 75 are the two active uh, assets on this contract, okay? And then subsequently, if we come back to the generate rental billings and we look at, come on. If we scroll down here, 62, no, that one's, our date's not out. We can see now that row 62, I'm sorry, contract 62, it's just showing row one and row three. So row two is no longer an issue, it's been returned. We're not gonna be billing anything on that. Only row three is gonna be, uh, or one and three, are gonna be picked up from here on out, okay? So it's all it's all kind of playing nice together. It's a pretty easy, easy process. All right, so uh, change management, piece of cake, nothing to it, uh, just a matter of making sure that your date's lined up and that uh, that you have the availability of the equipment. Again, some of that stuff has to be managed uh, by the folks outside of the system, not so, uh, just knowing what is available, that sort of thing, uh, and, and being able to think, but in terms of being able to actually execute this contract, it's easy, uh, easy as pie here. So, all right, so that's fixed there. Uh, now, returns management, I've already touched on this uh, a bit, uh, just been doing that change, but we want to make sure that all equipment is accounted for. Uh, we got to make sure that everything's that we're not missing any charge. We don't want to leave any money on the table. Also, got to be able to handle partial returns, and we we got a glimpse of that already with the uh, with the uh, with the swap out there. Uh, but if I go to the return screen here, uh, again, this is now going to show me. If you'll remember the uh, row two, we already returned it. So it's showing that the quantity open is zero. It's already been returned, so we can't return it again. Uh, 
All right. If I wanted to just return one thing or the other, I could I could do that now, or I can return everything. Uh, it's it's entirely uh, up to the user as to how what needs to happen based on the situation. One thing to point out over here, um, and we'll get into how this plays out a little bit more on week four, but with the assets that we, the way that the, the family is built to be able to manage assets, one of the things that we, we have is the ability to have what's called a component asset, that it's, it's an asset that's tied to a parent asset. Um, this could be, um, a lot of times this is used in kitting, so if you're renting out kits of equipment, um, you would have the, the parent asset would be your kit, and then you know the, uh, the components might be everything from a, a cable to a mouse all the way up to a major significant piece of equipment. But it's all tied together, and when that all goes out together, we want to make sure that all the different pieces come back. So to manage that, this, uh, if there is, if there were any components on here, it would say instead of parent, it would list the components as well. So not only are we checking in the main piece of equipment that went out, but we're also checking in all the different pieces that went out. We don't need any slow cash bleeds that are, you know, we're paying for everybody donating mice and uh, and cables and whatever else to uh, to our customers. We want to make sure that if we if we send it out, that it comes back, and we have the ability, again. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have have the ability to make sure that we account for missing and, and damaged equipment. Um, so if if any of those components are missing, we can address that and we can dis dis determine whether or not to to charge the customer. So to that, uh, if I wanted to mark this at these as return, then I would just simply change these zeros to one wherever I needed to do a return. Okay, I can do return all, and it automatically does it for me. Uh, where to go? There it is. Uh, returned and returned. Okay. However, doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes customer calls and says, "I have no idea where this generator went, or I have no idea where this light tower went." Uh, and at that point, you have to figure out how you're going to handle that. So we mark it. In this case, we would mark it as missing. And like I said, you can determine by checking this box, yes or no. Do I want to charge the customer for the? for some part of that, that cost. That's a policy question as to how much. Is it the full replacement cost? Is it the, the, the net book value of the asset? That's up to you guys, but you would say we want to charge it, and then this is how much we want to charge. Okay. Similarly, if it comes back damaged, we can mark it as damaged, how much the estimate is to fix it, and whether or not we want to charge the customer. If I just click charge customer on either one of these boxes, then that amount is going to come forward to the next invoice. Okay, and it'll make sure that uh, if I say it's a uh, I don't know hundred dollar replacement cost or damage fee or something like that, that's going to get added to their next invoice. And so again, we're not allowing these slow bleeds uh, to just continue to wreck our cash flow here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and just return these. Uh, let's see on ten thirty one, and that's still there. All right, so we, this is marked as closed. That just means that this dot, this particular form is closed, and that these two uh, rows were returned on 1031. So we'll click OK here. You'll notice back on our contract that it is uh, both row one and row three have been returned, and the end date is no longer a year from now. It's just uh, 1031. Okay, and so everything has uh, has been buttoned up nice and neat. What we want to do before we fully close it out is to uh, to build these out. Uh, which normally I would do, but uh, so we would want to make sure this open amount gets uh, cleared out. So we have a thousand dollars that they owe us between the three rows. So we could just bill those out like we normally would at the beginning, and uh, and then at that point we can mark it as being closed. Okay, and we would uh, update that, and now everything instead of being white is grayed out. You have the full record and everything that you need. You still get to it. Um, if you did need to open it for some reason, you could. Um, but uh, everything, it keeps it close, so you can kind of just keep it off of your system. So, um, so again, we're able to handle all of the equipment, um, we, we, whether it's partial return, whether it's a damaged return, missing, whatever it might be, we can handle it um, on that returns form.